Uh, I was looking to some of the questions. Frank says, what do you think about a trade with the Pelicans? Ingram and Alvarado for Bogey, Mitch, and Deuce. Oh, nice. Uh, no, for Ingram. Definitely not for Ingram. I would do it for other players maybe, but not for Ingram. Ingram, in my opinion, does not fit this Knicks team. Cry baby. He, skill set? I can understand skill set. His skill set is good. Not great, but good. But how does he normally play? With the ball in his hand, right? So if I bring him here, he's taking the ball away from not only my guy in Julius Randle, but he's also taking the ball away from Jalen Brunson. And what does that lineup look like? What am I looking at here? Are you playing OG and Anobi in the backcourt? Or are you keeping him there and Julius Randle? Or who's coming off the bet? Like, I don't understand how that would actually work with Ingram. Or are you going to do a small ball lineup, have Ingram at the four and Randle at the five? You see, it gets really tricky when we're talking about making these trades because here's the thing. If you make a trade like that, you have to justify what it means afterwards, what it does for this Knicks team afterwards. Does that team that you just created based on that trade make you a championship team? Not to me. Ingram cries for the ball each and every possession. You remember Team USA, right? Where he was talking about Steve Kerr, his coaching style, and the fact that he really couldn't get the ball. All of that stuff. You're bringing all of that, that baggage, that attitude, that emotion all to New York. Under this media, under these fans, he's going to get chewed alive. There's no way. I can understand the, the, the wanting to add Ingram because he's the star name. And Alvarado himself, is he can fit any team as well, too. He's very good. And I would almost do it for Alvarado and another team, maybe. But, I mean, another player, maybe, I should say. But to get Ingram here. You got to think about it. The, the lineup just doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. And even if you get to a point where you could make it make sense, which I think the only way it does is if you move OG and Anobi to the backcourt with Jalen Brunson. So that way you have Brunson, you have OG and Anobi, then you have Julius Randle, then you have Brandon Ingram. And then after that, you could, or you could have Brandon Ingram at the three and then Julius Randle at the four and then potentially have iHeart there. That could potentially be your lineup either way you want to you know, do it. You can interchange Julius Randle as you want to, though I don't think anybody wants to see Randle at the three. But you could potentially do that. But that doesn't sound good. That sounds clogged. And I think that if anybody was playing in that rotation, they would be mad. Somebody's not getting that ball. And Brandon Ingram is going to cry. He is going to cry to a lot of people because he's not getting the ball. You kind of know that. Otis says, let's talk about the coach. Oh, okay. You want to talk about Coach Thibodeau making mistakes? We can, all right, we can talk about uh, Tom Thibodeau making some mistakes here. Is Thibodeau the best coach? No, <laughs> he's not the best coach. He makes mistakes like everybody does. I mean, that's not a surprise, but is he turning into a better coach for this team? Yeah. If you fired Tom Thibodeau today, who are you hiring? Who's the number one coach you're hiring if you fired Tom Thibodeau? I can't think of anybody. I can't think of one person that I would have to bring in for Tom Thibodeau if he got fired. If I had to maybe guess, maybe Johnny Bryant, but does that get me the same team, the same output? I don't know. So Tom Thibodeau, for everybody who doesn't know, is right now in talks with the Knicks to sign a very lucrative long-term extension. According to a poll by The Athletic, it could potentially range between 10 to $13 million annually. He could be making Ty Lue money very, very soon. And that's because Tom Thibodeau gave the Knicks an identity out of nearly all the years he's been here, apart from one, we've been a playoff team and we've competed with all of the pieces that we've had on the roster despite dealing with injuries or trades or whatever the case may be. That's why Thibodeau's going to get the extension. If you don't like him, you don't like his coaching style, you don't like what he does, you're going to have to accept it. He is going to be the head coach of the Knicks. He's 66 now, by the way. He's probably going to be the head coach of the Knicks till he's 70. 71, so buckle up. It's going to be a long time. When you get success in the Knicks, the Knicks are going to reward you with a long-term contract. Trust me on that. I think Rick says, say, hey, Troy, about getting uh, Dalton from Tennessee for one of our draft picks this year. You know what? I've heard the name. I don't know much on the prospect. I got to be honest. So I don't want to answer something that I don't know too well on. I will say, though, again, that if you're talking about the Knicks and their draft picks, I just want to go back to one thing that we have here. Um, this is coming from the Bad Weather Fans podcast. Shout out to them when they had Jake Fisher on. 
they more or less confirmed that the Knicks, the most likely trade scenario for them is going to come draft night when they try to trade those picks. I think right now their priority is, is to fill the void. So really it's the wing and it's the center position. And then if you can get the backup guard, you do that. For me, the Knicks have it all easy right now. You draft the, the center with one of your first round picks. You go out and you trade for some other players that can fit your bench. And then you get Rokish Yokobitis. He's your backup uh, point guard to Jalen Brunson. Then you're done. That's it. That's for me. Rock says at recap, for me, it's Mikel or continue to wait and draft the wing. The draft situation, they're going to draft the wing. They worked out Ryan Dunn. Ryan Dunn is an aggressive monster demon on defense. His shot is garbage. He has nothing on offense. So if you're hoping for offense with Dunn, you are not getting that. But if you're talking about players that can come in right away, that can contribute right away, that can help right away, Dunn's that player. In my opinion, if he's there at number 24, the Knicks is going to draft Dunn. They're going to try to trade their other first round pick. If they can't trade it for a star or an impactful player, then Leon Rose is likely going to trade back, get some future assets, and draft another player, likely in the second round, that they can utilize and develop like they did Deuce McBride and a couple of these other players down the road. But I think that's where it comes down for the picks aspect. Going to Mikel Bridges. And I'm glad we're going to end it with this. Because Mikel, for me, as everybody knows, on this list is number one. Fit, check. Under Tom Thibodeau, check. High-level defender, check. All-star, check. Would he disrupt anything going on with Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle? No. So that's the check. Would he develop even better defensive instincts under Tom Thibodeau? Yes. Would he be a better player under Tom Thibodeau? Yes. Do the Knicks have all of the assets to make it happen? Yes. So why doesn't it? Sean Marks. That's it. That's it. Sean Marks. You want to know why Mikel Bridges is not part of the Knicks? You want to know why Mikel Bridges cannot even come to the Knicks or even have a podcast with his Brooklyn fans killing him? It's because they all know the hidden secret. They all know what we know. The Squidward meme is true. He wants to come to the Knicks. He wants to stay in New York, but he wants to stay and go to the Knicks. That's the truth of the matter. Josh Hart and Jalen Brunson almost always confirm it without confirming it. So that's what I think about that. Mikel Bridges, the perfect fit, the best star to go after right now for the Knicks this offseason. It's not even close. If you enjoy these clips from the live show, be sure to subscribe to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss any new episodes or when we go live. Thanks for watching, Nick fans. And until next time, peace.